All right, this will be our last content video, and we're going to talk about ANOVA. Now, these uh, ANOVA stands for Analysis of Variance, sorry. Um, and this is the final content. This is on the final project, and so we'll go over this and then post uh, some tips and hints about the project itself okay so the first question we got to ask is what in the world is ANOVA and like I told you like I said it does stand for analysis of variance but the easiest way to understand it is hey the t-test is great and the the problem is that the t-test is limited it's very good when I have one group or two groups but what happens when I have more than that and the answer is ANOVA. ANOVA is going to work just like the t-test, but when I have more than two groups, when I have three, four, six, eight, like on your project, there are eight or nine groups, and you can do an ANOVA. So the null hypothesis is that all the groups have the same mean. And the alternative is that at least one group has a different mean. OK. Um, and, and how does the code go? Well, it's stats dot F underscore one way. It turns out that F is the name of the statistic that we're calculating when we do ANOVA. So F underscore one way. And then notice that I have some dot, dot, dots. The data must go in like a t-test. The data goes in as arrays. And it doesn't matter the order that I put them in, but I have to put in However many groups I have, that's how many arrays are going to go in. So if I have five groups, then I do array one, comma, array two, comma, array three, comma, array four, comma, array five. So I can name them what I want, but if I have five groups and I'm comparing the means, the means among the five groups, I'm going to have to have five arrays, one for the numeric data in each of those variables. Okay, so the very first example that we have is we're examining the um, miles per gallon, the um, gas mileage by car type. And we have three different types. We have contact, compact sedans, we have SUVs, and we have minivans. And we're saying, hey, is there a difference in the average mileage between these three groups? And notice that since there are three groups, I can't use a t-test. So we're setting up the hypotheses just like we showed. Right, and the code is very straightforward. After we've created an array for the compact sedan's gas mileage, and we've created an array for the minivan's gas mileage, and an array for the SUV gas mileage, then we just put them in, separated by commas, into stats dot f underscore one way, and we're going to get spit out the statistic and the p-value. Okay. So let's take a look of that in take a look at that in the notebook. So here's our notebook, and uh, you'll see that some of what I just showed you is covered right here. And then there's the initialization code. All right. And the reason I'm going up is I'm showing you that we imported scipy.stats as stats. Okay. So everything should be available. Um, Stats.linregress. You know stats f underscore one way we should be able to do all of that and let's just make sure yes my code has initialized okay so here's the table we're reading in the hybrid.csv file comes in and the table is called cars and what are we doing we're getting all of the cars where the class is contained in so it could be either compact or suv or minivan okay and then we're taking a look at the group stats for the cars. And uh, so group stats is used on the final project. And how does it go? We name the table no quotes. Then we name the grouping variable, and it needs quotes. And then we name the numeric variable. It also needs quotes. So the grouping variable has three levels, right? The compact sedans, the minivans, and the SUV. So when I say grouping variable, I'm talking about the one. Um, it's usually uh, text data separates the, the groups. Um, 
and we have three different groups there. So what do we find out? We find out that the average for the compacts is about 43 and a half, and the average for the minivans is about 49. And look, way lower, 26 is where the SUVs come in. So when we look at this in terms of an association, it does appear that there's a possible association, and especially the SUV gas mileage appears to be a good bit lower than the other two, but we don't know if there's a difference between compact and minivan. So what are we doing? The way we do this is we do where class is compact and we do dot column MPG. Remember, we need an array. So now compact is an array that has the miles per gallon of all the compact sedans. And minivan, same way, where class is minivan dot column MPG. So now we have an array called minivan and an array called SUV. So we're using the dot where to get uh, the group that we need, and then we're using the dot column to turn it into an array data so that we put the three arrays, the names of the three arrays separated by commas in stats underscore, excuse me, stats dot F underscore one way. And what do we find out? We find out the test statistic is about 73.8 and the P value Notice is 3.62 times 10 to the negative 18th. So definitely check the end of these numbers for scientific notation. Okay, so let's look up here. And notice that P is almost zero. Why? Well, because of the 10 to the negative 18th, right? So um, this is a decimal place and 17 zeros and then 36209. So yeah, this is a tiny, tiny number, very close to zero. So we just use the approximately equal to zero symbol. And we know that it's less than alpha, even if alpha is small, like an alpha of 0.01, uh, P, the p-value is less, and so we reject the null. In other words, it does not appear very likely that all the types of vehicles have the same average gas mileage. Okay, what appears to be true is that at least one type has a different mean. Okay, so we do have evidence that a difference exists but what we don't know is what's different than what, okay? We noted that the SUV looked kind of suspicious, but, you know, we don't have information beyond that. So let's return here, and you'll notice that um, since we got a p, small p-value, it's appropriate to run a series of two sample t-tests to sort out which groups are similar and which are different. Now, just a quick caveat, we don't really run t-tests. Uh, a lot in this situation, but ANOVA is a more advanced statistical hypothesis test, and it has what are called, uh, you know, post hoc tests. Post hoc is Latin for after the fact, and so after we reject the null and find a difference, we do some kind of post hoc testing to ferret out where exactly the differences are. And without going too deep into this um, sometimes more complicated um, hypothesis test let's just use a hypothesis test that we already know we already know how to use the two sample t test and so we're going to use t test underscore ind and we check hey is there a difference between compacts and minivans and notice the p-value is larger than 0.05 so no we don't find any significant difference here between the compact and the minivans let's look at the compact versus the suv and oh my goodness with a 10 times, excuse me, times 10 to the negative 17, we're finding, yes, we're going to reject the null, and there is a difference between compact and SUV, and there also is a difference between SUV and minivan. Notice the times 10 to the negative 11th. Okay, so why did we do this? Well, we've seen these numbers before in a slightly different table, right? And we notice that there's a little bit of a difference between the compact and the minivan, but it was not statistically significant. The things that were statistically significant um, is that, um, you know, the SUV was different than both, okay? So the ANOVA says, hey, there's a difference, and then the t-test showed us where the differences are. The differences are between the SUV and the other two. Okay, uh, so thankfully the uh, t-tests have shown us that. And now this is just a visualization to help us understand that, yeah, 
statistically, according to the t-test, there was not a significant difference between the compact and the minivan. The significant differences were between the SUV and the minivan and the SUV and the compact sedan. Okay, so this one was different than both of the other two. But the other two were not significantly different from each other. Okay, and once again, as with all our notebooks, we have a description of how to calculate these values. Do you need to know how to calculate these values? No, but this is how it's done. And this is a look at the uh, F distribution that we would use in this case. And notice that the P value is so small that we can't see the tiny little bit of red that would be you know, the area shaded under the curve. It's so small that we can't see it. All right. Sorry. Okay. Um, so we do have some additional examples. We have hours of sleep by year in college and fuel mileage by class of truck. Let's look at the hours of sleep by year in college. Okay, so here's our group stats. Um, wait, sorry, I didn't enter the table. Okay, so the class data.csv goes in as a students, a table named students. All right, and then we do group stats for students. Notice that when we're using group stats, again, the group stats is going to be on the final project. We put the name of the table in first. We put the grouping variable in next, right? So the grouping variable is what year they are in school right first second third fourth and then sleep hours is the numeric variable so table grouping variable numeric variable it has to go in in that order if we do we get this nice data display right and what do we discover in the data display well if you look at these averages these are sleep hour averages they're almost identical Maybe seniors get a slight bit less sleep, um, but these other 7.38, 7.37, 7.4, 1st, first, second, and third years are really close. Okay, so what's the association we're seeing here? We're not seeing very much of an association. If there's a tiny bit of difference, maybe the fourth year students um, are slightly different than the other three. We don't know, but we can check that. All right, what are we going to do? We do students where college year is first. Notice that we do a dot column with the numeric variable. So this is an array called freshmen with the sleep hours for freshmen. And we have an array called sophomores, an array called juniors, and an array called seniors, which we put right into the stats.f1 way. What happens? Well, we get a test statistic of 0.28 and a p-value of 0.83. So notice that what we see here is that p um, is greater than alpha. Okay, so if p is less than alpha, we reject the null. But we, we fail to reject the null in this case because p is greater. So what does that mean? It means we have no evidence for any differences between the groups. No evidence for a group difference at all. Not for the seniors, not for anybody. Okay, and this is a picture of the uh, area under the curve that's shaded and almost all of it is shaded reds. So that's why the p-value is so high, so close to one. Okay, and reporting out um, with all four group groups so close together, the differences are not statistically significant. Okay, we fail to reject the null, and we find that there are no statistically significant um, differences. And this shows the situation with box plots, and you can see that while there are some meager differences that we did point out, they're pretty similar. Um, groups in terms of the way they're spread out. There are a couple more outliers in certain groups than others, some slight differences, but overall, in terms of the averages, there doesn't appear to be much of a difference here at all. And you can go ahead and look. This is very similar to the 
um, example we did to start and we do the stats dot f1 way truck suv and large boom what do we find out oh we get a small p value so we reject the null and we do find a difference between these classes of vehicle truck suv and large all right they show us the area shaded under the curve remember the percentage of area shaded under the curve that's what the p value is and reporting out yes we do see a statistically significant difference in group means and again where do we find it uh, you can see the box plots and if we would like to we could go in and do t-test just like we did before so just to wrap up uh, this is on the final project and what do we need to know okay so the null hypothesis is pretty much like this right the null hypothesis all groups have the same mean the alternative hypothesis is that at least one of the groups has a different average a different mean okay and how do I run it I use stats dot f underscore one way with as many arrays as I need separated by commas the data has to go in as arrays and if I have six groups I have to have arrays one through six in here separated by commas that's why I have the dot 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 because we however many groups we have in the ANOVA we have to have an array for each of them and they're gonna go in the function and then the p-value will tell me if there's a difference between at least one of those group means and the others alright so hopefully this will help you with your final project